Let's see, character entry added for Berna, for Ermion, for Bran, <clears throat> for Bran, excuse me, for Kruk on Crate. Murderer? What are you talking about? What the hell? A witcher. Why did he call us a murderer? What the hell's he referring to? Ah, quest completed destination, Skellige. New quest, the king is dead. Long live the king. Wow, that was a lot of stuff coming up there. Let's see, we've got... Nope, that's not what I wanted. Wrong key. Uh, Berna. Yeah, we saw her up there crying. It can be difficult for a woman to gain the esteem of knights and warriors not accustomed to seeing female hands on the reins of power. It helps little when, like Berna, widow of King Bran of Skellige, the woman seeking power is filled with acrid disdain for her countrymen and their customs. One might <laughs> argue that disdain is a valid reaction when, in the case of the passing of a man of power who embodies tradition, those customs call on her to follow long since outdated ritual and cast herself on her husband's funeral pyre. Justified or not, Berna's desire to re rewrite age-old Skellige traditions put her at odds with the Jarls and made it unlikely she would be remembered alongside Calanth of Sintra or Maeve of Lyria as a successful and revered ruler. Okay, so they don't like her very much. She, she says widow of King Bran. I don't know who the young woman was that died with him. Um, I guess she's not important enough to have a character entry. Okay, let's go back up here to Bran. King Bran, former king of the Skellige Isles, lived a long and storied life. When he finally felt decrepitude taking a hold of him, he went into the woods to hunt a bear armed with only a knife, and thus ended his reign. It was remembered as an honorable and respected one, though some complained he preferred raiding to confronting the Isle's long-term problems, and that he let his wife's tongue wag too freely. Some connected the two, claiming Bran sailed out to fight overseas battles to put off dealing with the ones waiting, awaiting him at home. Okay. Croc on Crate. Skellige sagas brim with praise for war chiefs and warrior braves of ages past, yet the saga of Croc, Jarl of Klana on Crate and Lord of Care Trolled, will outshine them all. It will sing of his strength, his courage, his wisdom, his generosity, his loyalty to friends, and his relentless pursuit of his foes. There will be few exaggerations in such a tale, for Croc, the mightiest of Skellige's Jarls, truly did possess all the traits of a hero. He aroused terror in his enemies. In fact, Nilfgaardian mothers would use his name to frighten their children into obedience, and all in that empire spoke in hushed tones of the infamous Turth versus Muir, the wild boar of the sea. Oh, not versus. Turth, East Muir, the wild boar of the sea, who devastated coastal provinces during frequent and terrible raids. Geralt had known Croc for, lo for long, since a time when, as a young man, the Jarl had sought the hand of young Pavetta, Ciri's mother. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. There's a lot I don't know. Ermion. Most druids in Skellige differ from the deeply root rooted continental stereotype of a gray-bearded old man in white robes bowing before sacred oaks, taming wyverns, and pestering local lords with petitions to add yet another species to the list of protected beasts. Ermion, Geralt's old acquaintance, was no exception in this regard. This stiff-bearded, spindly man was the leader of the druid circle in Skellige. He was also Jarl Croc on Crate's advisor on matters of magic and the mystical, as well as on any and all issues requiring more refinement than a well-timed uppercut or hard-swung axe. Ermion was known to be obstinate and to have a tendency, quite rare in Skellige, to consider all possible consequences of a particular course of action before it was undertaken. All this meant that conversing with him demanded a considerable amount of time and patience. Okay, I don't think there was any new other new updates here. Okay. Alright, so let's look at our quests here. We now have this quest. Before we look at that one, let's look at this um, 
Destination Skellige. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, Geralt recovered from his tumultuous landing and eventually reached Caretrolled Castle, home to Croc, Jarl of Clan, Clan on Crate. There he discovered all the notables of Skellige had gathered to bury King Bran, who had breathed his last a few days prior. In attendance as well, Yennefer. Okay. So this new quest here, this new main quest. Croc on Crate, an old friend, invited Geralt and Yennefer to a farewell feast for the recently departed King Bran. One does not refuse such invitations in Skellige, and so, willing or not, Geralt had no choice but to meet Yennefer at the castle gates and attend the wake at her side. Uh, so we need to go here to Yennefer's rooms and put on farmer, formal attire first and foremost, and that's just right back here, so let's just uh, head right back over here. There is a uh, merchant right here, apparently. I think... Is this the same guy we saw just a moment ago? Maybe not. Show me your wares. Oh, gosh. Uh, we already read all these. We didn't read... Oh, okay, here's the Ard Skellig one. This, this, the other guy didn't have this one for some reason. So now we have that one. And it is your lucky day, for I am about to read that. Go. With, let's see, get out of here. Farewell. So long. And we just picked up, where is it? This, the Lonesome World Guide to Ard Skellig. What time of year is the best for visiting Ard Skellig? Anytime. To whom is such a sojourn recommended? To anyone who seeks adventure, craves miraculous views, and adores charming villages. These last Ard Skellig, oh, these last Ard Skellig has in spades. It is the most densely inhabited isle in the archipelago, though this does not mean it lacks virgin forests or untrammeled landscapes. Particularly worthy of a visit are the villages of Ranveig, Arenbjorn, and, last but not least, Holmstein, one of the most important ports in all the isles. Anyone lucky enough to enjoy the sea voyage to Arenbjorn will surely notice the majestic lighthouse guiding ships to its harbor. Built at the behest of the famed Jarl Skjordal, it constitutes one of the most fascinating spots on the isle and offers breathtaking views of the entire region. The most spectacular vista on Ard Skellig, however, must certainly be that of Kaer Trold, a fortress cut out of the mountain overlooking the bay and serving as home seat to the powerful Oncrate clan. According to legend, Grimdjar, mythical Skellige hero and founder of clan Oncrate, carved the fortress with his bare hands. For more on this, see the history and culture sections. All right. New marker, Eldberg Lighthouse. New marker, Red Gill. New marker, Grotto. Huh. Come take a gander. New marker, Aaron Bjorn. New marker, Holmstein's Port. Oh, okay, so that's what reading those things did for us. New marker, Ruined Inn. Wow, that's a lot of new markers. Cool. I guess that means now we can fast travel to all these places, even though we haven't been there, maybe? Maybe. Uh, Rain Vag. Fifteen years ago, one of the fishermen of Rain Vag bagged an enormous halibut, and from that moment on, all the other villagers have devoted their lives to beating his record. Aaron Bjorn? A village whose calm is only occasionally disturbed by someone slapping another senseless or one comrade breaking a bottle of mead over his mate's head. Uh, Holmstein's Port, Piers and Docks for the village of Holmstein, Clan Drummond's Chief Port. Ruined Inn, ruined and burned down tavern, which once treated locals and travelers to the best roast lamb around. Grotto, an isolated off locale that can only be reached by boat. Really? Okay, I guess maybe because of this big mountain here. Uh, Red Gill. This village's inhabitants fled in a panic when a mysterious magic cataclysm struck the surrounding area. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then Eldberg Lighthouse. Lighthouse built on orders of Jarl Skjordal in order to light the sea route 
to Erinbjorn. And Svorlag. The village was founded by the mythical Sove, who killed a terrifying and bloodthirsty chimera on this spot. Wow, Marland Coast. This place is big. Until quite recently, this beach was frequented by fishermen come to fish marlins out of the nearby waters. Harvakin, home seat to Clan Dimun, and the location where Holger Blackhand dibbies out the loot after every successful raid. Okay, damn, nation, that was a lot. That's a, this is a big, big, big place. Well, let's run over here to where Yennefer's staying. Oh, we could level up. We have a point to spend, and we're just going to stick it into the, this here. Increase our Axie intensity even further. Which is pretty freaking awesome, if you ask me. There's Roach. Where is this place? Where is she staying? We offer you our means, the symbol of our valor. You are the valor of the eyes. Our skulls shall be bare till a new king sat upon Skelliger's Hmm. So they shave their heads until there's a new king. Hey, what's up, contestants? Pardon me, coming through. Locked. Oh, unlocked. Okay. This has got to be Yen's room. She always did like space <laughs> and luxury. He sounded kind of disgusted. And luxury. What the hell? Well, examine. Hmm. The stuffed unicorn. She fixed it. <laughs> she travels with this thing? <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap. Okay, these are the clothes, I guess. No idea how she managed to bring so much clothing. Must have hired out a galleon. Yeah, As right. usual, black and white. Black and white. Ooh, is she coming in? No, it's a chicken. <laughs> a chicken just opened the door and came in. That's hilarious. So where are the clothes that we are supposed to don? Uh, something over here to look at. What is this? All right, I'm trying to look at it now. Oh, gee whiz. Yennefer's journal? Yeah, I'll take that. Or just despicable, I tell you. Geralt. Is that a quest item? Uh. Doesn't seem to be. Yennefer's journal. My thoughts turn with increasing frequency to the idea of capturing a djinn. If I could just harness its power, there is much I would gain. Amos van Var Ipsy's tome confirms what I have long suspected, that despite my failure to do so previously, taming a djinn is in fact possible. According to Var Ipsis, the difficulties involved in bending such a being to one's will can be overcome. He managed to do so, at the least. Alas, this does not mean his methods will necessarily be useful to me. Each djinn is different. Each case requires a singular approach. I've more experience unraveling such magic riddles than almost anyone else alive, and if Geralt, with his talent for wrestling unruly magic beings, agrees to help, we just might find a way to do it. The problem is we must first find a djinn a daunting task unto itself. Oh, that's not what I wanted to read in her journal. I wanted to read some good stuff. Okay, let's see. Right here we've got... Scent of lilac and gooseberries, even with the lid on. Taste hasn't changed. You eat it? Okay. What's she keep in here? In her stash? Oh, okay, we could stash stuff there if we want. This is all this, all kinds of stuff that I put in there um, when we were in... Uh, um, Oh, what's it called? The Rosemary and Time. I just dumped a bunch of crap in there. Just to get it off my hands. 
maybe to sell someday. Uh, but probably not. It'll probably just sit in there forever. <laughs> What do we got here? What's going on here? What's this? Her megascope. I guess she never goes anywhere without it. As Philippa Hellhart said, megascopes and toothbrushes. Deeply personal possessions. Okay. See that chicken just opened that door and went out. That's weird. I don't need this. That's, that's weird. In this game you never know. That could have been some magic creature or something, you know? Could be. Could have been. Something here. The poison source. Desire de Vries. The poison source. Still turns to it for inspiration. Really? Oops. What about it? The poison source. No one is born a mage. We still know too little about genetics and the mechanisms of heredity. We devote too little time and resources to this research. Sadly, we still conduct trials in the inheritance of magic ability using, let us say, natural methods. The results of these pseudo-experiments far too often can be seen in the gutters of our cities and begging outside our temple walls. Far too often, we see and encounter brain-dead and moronic women, women covered in their own spittle and passing themselves as prophetesses, seers, village diviners, and miracle workers. Cretans with brains degenerated by the uncontrolled power they inherited. These simpletons and fools can themselves breed, can pass on their abilities, and continue the degeneration. Is anyone capable of foreseeing or defining what the last link in such a chain will look like? Most of us mages lose the ability to procreate as a result of changes and disruptions to the functioning of our pituitary glands. Others, sorceresses most often, mature into their magic powers with gonads intact. They can conceive and give birth and have the audacity to consider that good fortune a blessing. Yet I repeat, no one is born a mage, and no one should be. Aware of the gravity of what I write, I provide an answer to the question posed at the summit in Sedaris. I answer with every certitude. Each of us must decide what she wants to be, a sorceress or a mother. Okay. What else we got in here? Well, I'm mean, gonna I guess this is our uh, outfit that we're supposed to put on. Uh, let's see, we've got an elegant Skellige shirt, Skellige tunic, Skellige breeches. Oh, we get to choose our breeches and some festive slippers. Put on new clothes for your meeting with Yennefer. Fine. Let us put on new clothes. We have a tunic. We have a shirt. Let's see, we could wear that. Or we could wear that. Woo, that's beautiful. We could wear these breeches. Or we could wear these breeches. Um. Well, I don't know. That's fine. And some slippers. Let's see. Eh. Eh, it doesn't matter. All right, we've done this. Ooh, why does it still say put on new clothes? That makes me think that I didn't put on the right clothes. Do we not put on the right clothes? Is there something else that I'm supposed to be wearing? Or what, what am I supposed to wear this maybe? The elegant Skelligus shirt? Not real sure what we're supposed to wear. Okay, that's still there. What the hell? Hmm. Right. Okay. Just not something I'd ever wear. But what don't we do for our hmm? <laughs> Who exactly is she to me? You often talk to yourself out loud like that, Geralt. So yeah, we had to put on this specific outfit, and of course I put on the exact opposite of what we needed to put on. Now, we need to meet Yennefer here. 
uh, before we go to this wake. And we'll do that next time because it is time for me to take a break. A break before the wake. Thank you for watching. I certainly do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, won't you be so kind as to leave a like. Blah, blah, blah. Leave a comment if you wish. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you join me again in the next episode.